All right, let's look at a few things I want to uh, sort of lay a foundation to what we're going to be talking about, the importance of words and words in relation to faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I was, uh, want to relate this story to you because then I want to tell you my part and my commission. Uh, uh, Brother Hagen, Kennedy Hagen, we all know him. Uh, he's been the father of, of faith. He's one, my spiritual father, one of them, uh, Brother Hagen and, and uh, Dr. Sumron, Brother Cope. And, uh, but uh, Brother Hagen was holding a meeting. He left his last church in, in uh, 1949 and went out on the field. Well, now he was holding a meeting in 1951 in Graham, Texas. Amen. 1951 in Graham, Texas in the month of May. And so uh, he was there for four weeks. And uh, uh, many a times he's preaching twice a day. And uh, after the morning service, he would stay over in the church and he would fast and pray and give some time to walk in and read. I do that myself. I, I love to pray in church when the church is empty and, and uh, you just walk and pray and you, hold your, you keep your Bible with you in case God reveals some things to you, you write them down. Well, uh, he uh, took it in his mind to read the Gospel of Mark on his knees. You see, Mark is the shortest gospel. 16th chapter, I mean, don't take any time to read him. So he would come to the altar, and he'd kneel right there in the altar on his knees, and he would open the gospel of Mark and read it on his knees. And so after he had finished, now this is important because it has everything to do with my commission. And so after he had finished reading, I'm going to come down here, after he had finished reading the gospel of Mark on his knees, and then he just prayed in tongues for 45 minutes. Amen. He prayed in tongues for 45 minutes until his mind got quiet. You know you can pray till your mind gets quiet. Now sometimes it's easy when your body is still, but how many know sometimes your body can be still and your mind can still be rampant? But you see, he prayed in tongues about 45 minutes in other tongues, and then he was lying on the floor on his back, staring up at the ceiling, meditating on Mark chapter 16, which is the Great Commission. Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and so on and so forth. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I do that sometimes myself. Before every healing service, I go to Matthew chapter 10. And I go to Mark chapter 16. And I meditate on these signs shall follow them that believe. And I meditate on that I'm a believer. And these signs do follow me. And then I meditate in Matthew chapter 10 where it says he called his disciples unto him and gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and power to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And I meditate on that. And I said that means cancer too. And I meditate on that. So that I'm charging my own spirit up, getting ready for the healing service. Amen. And so he was reading the gospel of Mark on his knees. Everybody say on his knees. On his knees. And then he lied there on the floor, staring at the ceiling, praying in tongues for 45 minutes till his mind got quiet. And then the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, did you notice? Did you notice in the Gospel of Mark chapter 11? In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, did you notice that the word say is mentioned three times and the word believe is only mentioned one time? He said, no. He said, Lord, I hadn't noticed that. I had noticed that. So he got up off the floor and he grabbed his Bible that was open there right on the altar. And he, he, he went to that verse and he read it out loud and he counted it. And Jesus said, for verily I say, so you don't count that, that's Jesus speaking. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say, that's one time, unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, believe is one time, amen, but shall believe that those things which he said, say it, that's two times, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said three times. And he said, no, Lord, he said, I had noticed that. Now at this time, he had read through the New Testament 150 times, straight through, from Matthew to Revelation, 150 times, and portions of it more than that. He said, particularly in this particular verse, he said, I'd read it thousands of times. One time he said, I quoted this verse all night long, hundreds of times, all from the sun setting to the sun coming up in the morning. I quoted this verse hundreds of times. He said, but I had noticed that. I had noticed that. Do you know you can read the Bible and read right over something and, and not notice it? Amen. Amen. Many a times, 
when the Holy Ghost speaks to me, many a times he'll begin his conversation by saying something like this. Did you notice? Implying that I, I had noticed. I read through the New Testament. I read portions of the Bible uh, num numbers of times. But there are certain truths that I just read right over it. I just didn't notice. So the Holy Ghost said, did you notice that the word say is mentioned three times and the word believe is only mentioned once? And he said, he just looked at that and he said, no, Lord, I hadn't noticed that. And then the word of the Lord came to him and said, my people primarily, that means in the main, my people primarily are not missing it in the, in the believing side, for they're taught to believe, but they're missing it in the saying side of faith. So the Lord said to him, so then you will have to do three times, everybody say three times, three times. you will have to do three times as much as teaching on the saying part of faith as you do on the believing part. Three times. And then he said he sat there and he thought about every conference that he had gone to, he thought about uh, uh, every uh, minister's meeting, a conference, uh, other uh, speakers that he had heard. And he said that he, he just went back in his mind. He had a good memory. And he said, I just never recognized. He said, I couldn't recollect in my mind of nobody ever preaching on the saying part of faith, but always talking about the believing part. He said, I, I just, I, I thought about it. I don't remember anybody teaching on it. And he said that he was doing a little of it, but he was encouraged by others that he was doing too much. And it was encouraging him to back off of that saying. But the Lord said to him, you'll have to do three times as much teaching on the saying part as you do the believing part. Amen? Amen. So that was his commission. And so he had already received the commission in 1950 from the Lord Go and teach my people faith. Amen. Now, I told you that because of something he told me more in recent times. So you see, God raised that movement up to teach on the saying part. You can have what you say. And they got all kind of uh, uh, names for it that, uh, that people take pop shots at it, name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. You know, they, they say all kind of negative things about that. But Jesus said it, didn't he? That didn't come from Brother Hagin. Jesus said, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said with his mouth shall come to pass, you can have whatsoever he said. Jesus said that, not Brother Hagin. He's quoting Jesus. Amen. Well, now, how many know, I want you to understand this, that sometimes your commissions change. The, the only commission that's permanent in the church is the Great Commission. Go ye therefore in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, that's the only commission that's permanent. That's general to the whole church. With the preach Jesus, with the heal the sick and cast out devils. Amen. That's for everybody. But how many know every individual can be called by God, if you're called to the ministry, to major on the specific part of the gospel. Amen. Well, see, commissions change. They're not permanent. When you get a commission from the Lord, you have to follow the leading of the Lord. And when he says do something different, then you got to do something different. Now, I'll give you an example. Brother Charles Capps, he taught uh, the message of faith for 28 years. Amen. When it came down to the bottom half of 1998, the Spirit of God, he was teaching on the subject of faith, but it seemed to not have any flavor. It didn't have any salt to it. It kind of was just dull and gnawing, you know, just dull. And Charles Kath went to the Lord about it. You know, he's a great faith teacher, one of the best in my opinion. In fact, I was at a meeting in uh, Plano, Texas, uh, at uh, Gerald Brooks' church, Grace Christian Center, in the month of November, the year 1989, Brother Hagin was holding a minister's conference. And this was a closed-door minister's conference. I was there, probably about 400 people that was there. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said to him, he said, uh, back in the early 80s, he said, now, in the late 80s, he said, now you can go on from teaching on the subject of faith. You don't have to teach on it as much now. See, he changed. See, that 30 years had come and gone from 1950 to 1980. 30 years plus had come and gone. The Lord said, you can go on from teaching the subject of faith. You don't have to teach it as much now because I have raised up others 
Everybody say others. others. I have raised up others to carry the message of faith. And then he said, Jesus called Charles Capps' name, such as Charles Capps. Woo! What an honor. What an honor to have Jesus on your resume. Jesus endorses me as a faith teacher. What an honor. Jesus called Charles Capps a faith teacher. Now he says, among others, Charles Capps, I think Fred Price could have been thrown in, and Orville Hayes and others, you know, that was called to teach on the subject of faith. But you see, he told Brother Hagin, he said, go on and teach on the moving of the Spirit. There's a move of the Spirit that's going to be lost in this generation if you don't teach people on it. Teach them how to be led by the Spirit. Teach them how to follow the moving of the Spirit. Go on from teaching faith and teach other things. So you see, his commission changed, then, didn't it? In 30 years, it changed. Amen. Now, I'm telling you that for a reason, because in more recent times, I've received the commission. And that commission is slightly different from what he said to Brother Hagin uh, back in 1951. Amen. Well, let me finish up about Charles Capps. And so Charles Capps was teaching on the subject of faith. And it got just dull to him. I don't mean the subject got dull. It's sort of like uh, when Brother Hagin was pastoring and he, he said he had the best church he ever had. He made more money than he ever made. Had the largest Sunday school he ever had. Had the best parsonage he ever lived in. And you would think from all probability that he would be satisfied. But the more he prayed, he was dissatisfied. Well, now how come? He said it felt like washing your feet with your socks on. Your feet's getting wet, but you're not making the connection. Amen. And so Charles Katz was preaching faith, but he said it didn't feel right. So he took up the praying. He went to the Lord. He started praying about it. Now, here's what the Lord told him. He said, now you can go on. You can go on from teaching faith. You see, there's others now that he's raised up to teach faith. Now, this was in 1998. Well, I believe I'm one of those others. Amen. Amen. You see, God has people to teach faith afresh and anew in every generation. Amen. I said in every generation. Amen. I said in every generation. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so Charles Capps, he, he said, well, Lord, what am I to teach? He said, I want you to, he says, Lord, Charles Capps is from Arkansas. And he said, uh, uh, Charles, I want you to teach on the end time. And he said, Lord, I don't know anything about the end time. He said, that's okay, Charles. Most people teaching on it don't either. <laughs> And he said, good, good. You don't have nothing to unlearn. I want to teach you about yes. end time. Yes. My, 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 did he ever. Did he ever. He taught Charles Capps a whole heap a lot about the end time. Charles Capps teaching on the end time confused people that had been teaching on the end time. <laughs> Amen. He came up with stuff that people just didn't have. They just made them scratch their head. Amen. But you see, your commission, your leading changes. Don't ever get stuck in a rut on one leading. Are oh, you listening to me? Stay current with the Lord. If you stay in prayer, if you stay active, you'll stay current and you'll keep moving on in faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'll give you one more scripture example. You remember Elijah when God sent him to, uh, down to the brook Cherub. He says, go, I've commanded ravens to feed thee there, didn't he? I said, didn't he? Well, that was a leading from the Lord, wasn't it? Well, so God sent him down there to, to, to be fed uh, twice a day by the ravens. Amen. But in the process of time, the brook dried up. And God said, now get thee to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow lady there to sustain thee. Yes. Well, but now you see, if he would have just stayed in, uh, uh, by the brook chair, and say, well, no, I'm not leaving here. God sent me here. God sent me here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to leave the brook chair. God sent me here. You know, he would have died there Amen. at the brook chair with no water. He would have died and with starvation. There because it came to a point in time that the ravens had stopped coming. Amen. Now it's time to go to Zarephath. Amen. Amen. Now, how come me to tell you this? Because in more recent times, about two years ago, the word of the Lord came unto me and said, now... I want you to major on the believing side of faith. For my people have learned to speak, and they are, are speaking my word, but many of them that are taught to speak are not believing it. Therefore, their words are empty and in vain, and there's nothing happening for them. So now I'm going to sweep up and 
and talk about the believing part. Amen. 